Hey, my name is Rob. Thank you for taking a few minutes to watch this demo video. I wanted to showcase Active Core. It's a product platform we sell to companies who are looking to build their own CRM or ERP software. The unique thing about our product is that it will be property that you will own outright. The platform isn't meant to be a one-size-fits-all. We use this product as a starting point and we customize it and tailor it to fit your business requirements and workflows. That the system is currently connected to the G Suite uh, application. That's the, that's the application our team uses to distribute email addresses and stay connected. We could integrate with other things like Office 365 if you wish. It's going to ask us to log in and again this is G Suite so I'm going to select my email address. It's going to ask for some permissions because the system does send email on behalf of you and a few other things. And this is the dashboard. Granted, this is all mock data, test data. Um, obviously, you have your interface here that lists all the contacts. Uh, to add a new contact, obviously, it's the plus button. It's a pretty simple interface. Ask for some basic information. Uh, you can create your own groups. Um, basic info, I'm not going to create one for now. Uh, we've already created many. As soon as you create one, you'll get into the detail screen, the screen of the contacts. <clears throat> you'll notice that there's a lot more information than was previously shown. This is what was previously shown. But it adds a whole other box that you could add more details. Um, we consider these, you know, it, it's more than just a prospect. Um, we can have a different stage. These stages do change depending on the group that they are a part of. Um, so if we come back here and change the lead to, let's say, a client perhaps, click Save, you'll notice that the stages change depending on what group you've selected. These are fully customizable. Uh, the stages and the groups are fully customizable in the settings area. And we'll take a quick visit over there in a new tab real quick. Uh, you could add new stages by clicking here. Um, and you can customize everything, names, sort orders, whether you want to show it on the pipeline or not. Pipeline is over here. We'll visit that in a moment. Uh, but basically, this is how you add stages. Closing out of that. Coming back to the contact detail section, you could assign different things, um, give referral sources. You could use these for other things as well. Obviously, there's no rule to say we have to use it for referral sources. We use this information so we could pull uh, better metrics and reporting off that data. You know, what sources are providing us the most leads, that kind of stuff. Um, you can select what services, and again, you could do multiple selections. You could enter your own. No big deal. We've added a few stuff, a few things in here that help us kind of uh, keep track of what we're spending and, and how much you know is projected and stuff. So there's there's a bunch of stuff in here. Each contact you could set up reminders. Um, we use this a lot for when we talk to a client who may not be ready at that moment or who wants us to follow up in a month or two. Uh, so we do create reminders here. You can set the date and the time. It's pretty simple. The notes, and you can choose whether or not to notify everybody on the team. And what happens when that date and time is reached, um, you get an email from the system with all the information. It, it's just a simple reminder. The next thing we can do is the uh, detachments. You can uh, upload as many attachments for any of these contacts as you wish. Uh, it doesn't matter what they are, what they're for. Traditionally speaking, we use these to keep track of our scope of work. We use these to keep track of our, our contracts and agreements or any documents that we receive from the client um, so we can have them in one central place. And this is really cool, actually. It's more than just sending an email, but if there's an email address attached, you get this email button and you can click on it to send an email. First and foremost, it does have a signature that's automatically generated, which is kind of cool. But um, there's also this logo right here, 
which um, it, it seems just like a standard image, but it's actually a tracking device. So whenever you do send an email, it does report back to the system and let you know if the user actually opened up the email. So that has been a very neat feature to have. The activity we found actually quite important throughout the life cycle of, of just everything we do. Um, and it's not just leads, um, but you know, that is a big factor. But as soon as you fill out this email form, or as soon as you schedule a reminder, or as soon as you add an attachment, it always adds an activity to help you keep track. Okay, Eric Schwartz sent an email, Eric's one of our, our guys. Uh, sent an email, Eric Schwartz added a reminder, uh, Eric Schwartz had a phone call. Uh, you just keep track of all the different touch points for a particular client. And you could add custom ones if you've had a text message back and forth with your client or with somebody, uh, then you can go ahead and add that here. And that is important uh, to keep, just to, to have that insight into the life cycle of the particular contact, but it's also important for the system to understand the last time you've reached out to that person. Uh, that's That'll tie into the drip email section, which we'll go to in a minute here. I'd like to go ahead and show you the pipeline section. Obviously that ties heavily into the groups and the stages, uh, as well as the settings. You can customize the stages and it has an option whether or not to show it on the pipeline. The pipeline is your traditional sales pipeline. Um, let's click over to it. Uh, basically, you can create your own stages in here and you could assign contacts to those stages. It just helps you keep track of where at in the sales cycle a particular client is. You can assign new to a new stage easily by coming to the section saying, you know what, Matt, uh, from Hamill Inc. is now actually we you know maybe we skipped the proposal to presented stage and we've already sent it or we forgot or whatever we can automatically send it to the waiting for signature and what it's going to do when you click that is it's going to ask you for some notes and this this adds it to that activity section we were just talking about which is very helpful to keep track of why a contact moved from one stage to another right now I'm just going to put this as a test but you notice when you do that, Matt is over in the waiting for a signature. It's just very helpful to visualize where your leads are at on <clears throat> in the sales cycle. And the, the lead pipeline only works with the contacts group, just so we're clear. So if you come here and you select this particular one as a client, it will no longer show up in your pipeline. It's only for leads. Um, this section is used and built for my team. Um, we, we do manage 15, 20 projects at any given time, sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more, but that's a good average. We want to know, and we work hourly, so we want to know where at in the budget we are over the overall time frames, estimated time frames of completion, all that kind of stuff. We also have a way for our developers to track their time against the project. So if I click the project section, um, again, mock stuff, but um, essentially we see the client it's assigned to. The a total allotted hours when we actually sold the project. So with every project, even though we work hourly, we sell the project as, okay, you know, it's estimated we're gonna spend 500 hours, 300 hours, whatever it might be. So there is a lot of amount of hours that we keep in mind and we factor into this. The log is actually how many logged by the developer. And that is, uh, you know, all of our developers do log into our active office system. They don't see many of these other sections because we do have some pretty good um, access control going on. They only see the time tracking section. And uh, we're also building out a few more features for them for time off and, and different stuff like that. But they can go in and, uh, and I can showcase that in, in here in a bit, but uh, they can go in and log hours to a particular project by just selecting the project putting in their hours, small description, uh, and it's a very cool little system of how that works. But that is what the logged hours is. The budget is where we're at in the budget, and it basically calculates this off the total amount of logged hours compared to the total amount of allotted hours. Uh, you'll also notice it gives an estimated completion date. 
that is based on uh, several things within this record. Let me just open up one of these so you can see. You can click the um, edit project. Sorry, took me a moment. Uh, you see the sales agent was Troy. The client is uh, Koss, Ebert, and Ledner. Uh, project name is what we gave it. Uh, the allotted hours is, is, is a physical number that we gave it, and we put in the start date. Well, we also put in the total resources. Some of our projects, it's not just one person on the project. It could be two. It could be three. Uh, so we do factor that into the equation when it comes to calculating the estimated completion date. Because my team only works Monday through Friday, and it's about a 40-hour week per developer, and we have 720 hours in the projects, but 468 of those were already logged. We just do some math calculations and get some of the, the estimated time frame of the project, which is a super, super helpful way to kind of keep track of things. And this little progress indicator is a very visual, nice way of seeing where things are at in, in a visual aspect. So it'll turn yellow. It's green if you're under the 50% mark, yellow if you're over. And once you get to, I believe it's the 70 or 80% mark, uh, maybe even 75, it turns red. So just letting you know that, okay, fingers are getting close. From here, you can access the client profile, which is that just the details screen for the client. You could also ask, access the time logs, which is, is very cool. It's a cool feature. So I can go ahead and click on the time log. Um, I went ahead and added a, a test entry for today, but you'll get a feel for uh, it, it breaks them down into weekly chunks. Um, you can see that you could just toggle by clicking. But it breaks everything down by weekly chunks. You see how much your team has been allocating for, you know, how, logging against that project. Here is the drip email section, which I find to be a very cool complement to this entire product. Okay, so right now there's nothing. We're going to go ahead and create a campaign. But first, let me go ahead and explain to you kind of what the section is meant for. This section is meant to keep on top of, of your leads and to, and to have some form of small communication with them um, to keep that lead warm. Um, so it doesn't, it's not meant to blast out tons and tons of email. This system directly integrates with, your, uh, with our Google account, so it sends from our own email addresses. And you could even go into the sent folder and see those e those emails being sent. Um, but essentially, it's a way for us to keep. And it's not just leads. It could be it could be anything. It could be developers. Like for us, we use it for candidates, developer candidates who we uh, have interviewed. They weren't ready to make the switch at the time, so we want to email again. You know, in six months, just to keep on. You know, keep tabs with them a little bit. So we'll go ahead and just create a test campaign for now. The send delay is essentially the number of days since the last contact. The last contact is derived from the activity feed. So if you had a coffee with somebody and you enter that in your, you know, as an activity, that is going to be your last contact. So it's going to be the day since last activity. So a drip email, for instance, when one of those is sent, it actually adds an activity for you. So it'll be, you know, if you put 90 days, it's going to be 90 days from that last drip email, or if you went in there and added a different activity, it's an additional 90 days from that point. Uh, you can restart the campaign automatically when it ends, uh, after it goes through your sequence of emails, um, or you can just have it a, a one-off where it just goes through the sequence of emails and it's done, and you can enable or disable the campaign. So once you have created your campaign, you have to create your series of emails that are sent. Uh, and you can add as many as you want. Um, and you can change the order in which you know the sequence is, exists. Um, but essentially, um, you know, you can put whatever you want here. We can say hi, and you'll notice that you can use these special little tags that are replaced um, when the email is sent. Um, so it'll be hi, you know. Hi, Bob. Was just checking in. Please let me know if you have a moment to catch up. Save. Oh, forgot the sort field. Uh, the sort field is uh, important. Um, it defines the sequence. So I want this email to be sent first, and then I'll make a new email to be sent second and third and so on. So it's just numerical order. You could, I'll just put one in there for now. Um, I can come in here and make a new one if I wanted to. You know, set number two, whatever. 
Uh, also, I want to notice you, you can edit the campaign details from here as well. After you click on one, this will populate, but you can add new emails, you can edit the current campaign or delete it. I'm just going to create the one for now, but you'll see that I called it test campaign, which is important. So to assign contacts to a campaign is pretty simple. Um, it is a manual process. Uh, so you come over here to contacts, let's say, well, I'll just go to Matt again. Um, if you have, you notice that that field doesn't actually show if you don't have campaigns. But as soon as you have created a campaign, you do have a, an assigned drip campaign sort of field. You can come here and just click test and save. And that's literally all you do. So at this point, because of the way that I set up my drip emails, um, I put a 90 day interval. So every 90 days, Matt's going to get an email uh, unless I intervene, unless I go in there and turn it off, or unless I set the status of this to inactive or unless I have a new activity on there. If I come here, you know, if Matt's supposed to get an email tomorrow, but you know, the day before I come in here and I add something to his activity, like, oh, I had a call with Matt, so I'm gonna log that. Then it's going to be, it's gonna reset that timer. Okay, next on the list is the prospector section. Um, full disclaimer, we don't typically sell this section or this functionality within a standard build of Active Core. Not everybody needs it, and it is a very cool, powerful um, little system. Um, so if this is something that you are wanting, let's chat about it. In any case, let me just go into it, kind of talk about what the section does. Um, this is a, a really great way to find new clients, new, new leads, and it automatically inserts them into the CRM for you and, and it builds your lead database for you. Um, I'm not going to create any right now. I'm just going to kind of talk about it and go over it high level. But if you click create a new prospector, what it's going to do is basically set up, let's call it a bot. It's not really a bot, but let's call it a bot. It's a bot that you can name. You can say, all right, I want five emails to be sent out. Um, and the emails uh, our, our direct correlation to the drip campaigns feature. This system works very closely with the drip campaigns. This system's responsibility is in finding the leads. The drip emails campaign section is for sending the emails. So let's say I want to find five a day, five leads a day. And we do recommend keeping that number kind of low. We don't want to send out thousands of emails. This is just a way to trickle out some some emails and get some responses. You do want your your emails and everything to be to be set up beforehand and to be it, it really needs to paint a good picture we're not we're not in this to, to to send out mass emails so we do recommend keeping that number low but I can come here you know that test campaign is what we just created so I want to send all right let's send that test campaign I, or I can go in and even create a new one no big deal um, so I want to prospect so I want to find companies that have between 10 and let's say 50 employees in the Kansas City area. Well, that's great. You know, I could find companies who match that criteria. Additionally, optional, like these are the required fields, you have to you have to enter those. Uh, additionally, you can come down here and you could select specific industries which aren't populated in this demo version of the CRM. Um, but there's a, there's the over a hundred different industries you could select. Uh, you could select the different seniorities. So I can say, oh, you know what? I want to target specific people within those companies as well. I want to get executives and, and directors only. Um, and that's great. Um, you could select different roles. Um, like, it, it, contrary to what just titles are, the roles of the company are also, you know, like marketing, or it could be accounting or HR. Uh, that's what roles are. And you can, you can select multiple roles. You could say, oh, you know what? I want to you know not directors or executives, but maybe I want to select everybody in, you know, the the that human resources role. You know, if maybe that's who I'm trying to target. Um, you could also select job titles. Again, they're not populated here um, in the demo version, but you can you can even add your own, um, or you can basically select from a list. As soon as I add this, what it's going to do is save my settings to a prospecting bot, for instance. And it's going to use, uh, we have a partnership with a service uh, that does the data, that provides the data for us. Um, you know, there are other, there are many services out there. Clearbit, 
uh, zoom info, stuff like that. We could use whatever you want and customize that further. You will have to have a license with them to use this system. This is why we don't release it as part of our core package. Uh, we have a license. So we actually utilize this for our sales guys to find new leads. But basically what it will do is it'll search your region uh, in, in a very large database uh, of, of companies and contacts and people and it'll it'll use the search match the search criteria against that search new prospects automatically insert them into the contact section and assign them at that drip campaign and the drip campaign will send them an email um, it's a great tool phenomenal tool to, to help you build your your contacts database so for this next section I went ahead and logged out because I wanted to show you um, the, the, ACE, the access control that, that is built into the system as well, which can be customized. But one of our developers can actually log in and all that they actually get to see is the time tracking section. We don't want them to see anything else. There's no need to. Um, we're also gonna be building out a few more features for them in the, in the future here that they'll have access to. But for now, they just have the time tracking, which is imperative for our project section to fully, to fully function. Our developers can come here um, and log their time. I will note that this section also integrates with Slack, which is a chat-based messaging system that we use internally. Millions and millions of companies do. Um, it does actually report to the administrators when somebody has not logged their, you know, full eight-hour day or or something like that. Um, so that is extremely helpful for us to keep track of things, make sure people are updating their time. But essentially, they come in here and they can either, you know, if they don't have anything in here, they can click right in the middle or they can click the new time entry um, to basically select their project um, and then the total hours they worked for that day and kind of what they worked on. Um, it is very helpful for the developers in a very simplistic way to do that. Uh, they can even go back days, you know, if they forgot their time yesterday, they will get a notification on Slack as well. Um, they can come here, go back to yesterday and, and enter time for that or they could jump to a specific date by clicking the calendar icon. But you can see this is a very simple way for our developers to just keep track of their time. I appreciate you taking the time uh, with me to walk through this demo. If you have any questions at all, please reach out to us. Uh, we have uh, a few guys just will be happy to answer any questions that you have uh, and are able to give you another uh, hands-on demo if you'd like. And you could ask specific questions. Thank you.